Detours. How many of us like those? I know I don't. But do you know that God has a way of using detours to get you to your destiny? Even when life seems to be spinning out of control. I'm Bishop A. Reginald Littman, and you're watching the Midweek Refill. Stay tuned. I'll be back right after this. And welcome back to session number five of our series entitled Finding Peace When Life Spins Out of Control. I know that you, just like myself, have had some situations in your life that just have seemed almost like a whirlwind effect with life just spinning out of control. Well, guess what? That is not anything new. But even in the days of scripture, probably maybe even worse than we have it now, life seemed to have spun out of control even for believers in the days and times of Christ. In fact, in the book of Colossians, which is where our key verse is for this week, we're going to see how the church at Colossae began to have lives that spun out of control. And yet, the positive word that the Apostle Paul said to them, and now God says to us about how we can still have peace in the middle of a detour. Hey, make sure you grab the free PDF workbook that accompanies this teaching. You can find a link for it in the description below. You want to get it because not only does it summarize what I'm sharing with you now, but it also goes a little further with great stories that you can draw powerful personal applications for your everyday life as you live out your life, even when life spins out of control. But here's the greater thing is that you can share that document with other people along with this link. In fact, every time you hit the thumbs up, every time you comment, every time you uh, make sure that you're subscribed and all of those kinds of things, you help us to be found. You push us out farther so other people can find the truths that we teach here during the midweek refill. And we want you to be a part of what we're doing. So make sure you get the free workbook that goes along with the teaching. And again, you can find the link in the description below. So let's jump into our verse for the week, Colossians chapter three, verse number 15. And this is Paul writing and listen to what he says. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Now, this is a mighty powerful verse. And you should know that these words were spoken not as Paul was standing up to accept a valedictorian position as a graduate of the Roman University, nor an acceptance speech as man of the year. These words were penned somewhere between A.D. 60 and 62, some 27, almost 30 years after Christ had ascended back into heaven while Paul is sitting in a Roman prison cell. Paul is in prison under the most notorious leader, Nero. Nero was known for chopping heads off. In fact, he had a little spot he did it at called Nero's Chopping Block. And Nero was a ruthless leader who was a tyrant, very angry, very irritated, and always willing to take a human life. Well, there were some other things that were going on in the church at Colossae. First off, the city of Colossae had prior to this point, been a real generator of wealth and economy. It was a booming city at one time. They even produced special products that came 
especially from Colossae, until the economic boom turned into an economic disaster and the city of Laodicea began to open up and siphon all of the customers and business and money, plants, if you will, away from Colossae. So there's been an economic downturn amongst the finances, not only of the Christians at the church of Colossae, but also the people that live there. But again, Paul is in prison under Nero, who was a lunatic. The people of the city have had economic depravity to suddenly hit them. But now, in addition to all of that, life is spinning out of control because the church at Colossae is having arguments and debates going back and forth about how to appropriately apply scripture. They're new at this, and their leader, Paul, may have begun this church during his three-year tour in Ephesus, so it's believed. But nonetheless, he is not present to answer these questions. And he has looming over his head the real possibility of having his head chopped off at Nero's chopping block. Life had really spun out of control for the church at Colossae. But listen carefully again to the words of the Apostle Paul as he wrote them from prison to the church at Colossae, who has experienced economic downturn, now spiritual battles within their own lives, and the looming, gloomy outlook of their shepherd having his head chopped off. Listen to what he says in a situation like this when life has spun out of control. He says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you are called to peace. And listen to that last part and be thankful. Paul is telling the church at Colossae, and yet God is telling the church of today that you can still find peace even in the middle of a detour. God has a way of using detours to get you to your ultimate destiny. So here's sort of a snapshot of Colossians. The peace of Christ that Paul speaks of in this verse is one of fellowship and of harmony that must prevail in the Christian community. Paul is telling the saints at Colossae, I know things are out of control, but what I need you to do right now, even if you don't understand how to apply the scriptures or the teachings that I am sending in my letters to you, even if you don't understand what's gonna happen in the future, even if I don't make it from under the tyranny of Nero, let the peace of Christ and the Spirit of God bring harmony and let that prevail over anything else that's going on in the Christian community. My friends, how much better and how much more beneficial would our lives and the livelihood of churches, ministries, organizations, fellowships, denominations, and reformations be if we were to allow the peace of Christ to prevail in our relationships one with another. And we're living in times in which, yes, this world seems to be spinning out of control. But Paul says it's a detour. One thing about a detour is whoever puts the detour sign there is already readily aware that if you follow this route, eventually you will get back on the road to where you were headed. Notice a detour sign 
It's not a go back home sign, the journey's over. It just means there's gonna be a slight inconvenience, but this inconvenience is actually extenuating your life because if the detour sign was not there and you kept going and the bridge was out, think about how that could end up. God is the same way with detours. He will allow things to happen in our lives to slow us up and turn us in a different direction. But why does he do that? So we can see something different on the journey. And what Paul is telling the church is, hey, I know you're confused. I know you're even frustrated. I know even financially you, you're, you're, you're experiencing some major challenges here. I get it. I know that people are laughing at you because your pastor is in prison. And they're saying, why don't you come back to synagogue? Why don't you come back to the old way? Paul says in the midst of all of that, I need you to have the peace of Christ top of mind and allow his guidance to be your peace in your life right now. And while they were bickering over scripture and all sorts of other things, Paul was simply saying to them the big lesson of Colossians 3, there should be no division, no discord among believers. How much better would our churches be, our lives be, our civic organizations be if we were to practice a no division, no discord policy amongst us? How much better would your marriage be, your friendships, your associations, if you were to refuse to allow division and discord to be a part of your life experience. So the spirit of fellowship and of harmony is to rule when there are differences that do arise. Now, even in today's modern church or in any relationship whatsoever, there will be differences of opinion. There will be these who decide they want to go this way and these who decide they want to come that way. But the rule should be whatever Christ would have us to do and doing everything in the spirit of fellowship, in the spirit of unity, in the spirit of union, that is what should guard our hearts, minds, and decisions at all times. I want you to put this into practice. Start with your closest relationships. Allow the spirit of fellowship and harmony as the rule when differences occur. So what does that mean? It might mean that you have to surrender your will sometimes, or it may mean that you have to compromise, or it may mean that you agree to disagree, but not be disagreeable, but be able to disagree without being disagreeable. There's power in that statement. Try it. I believe you will see, as the church at Colossae did, that God can use detours to get us to destiny. So our focus must be upon what is most important when there are differences of opinion, differences of views. What is most important is not what I think or what you think or what you want or what I want. What is most important is doing whatever honors the name of Christ and doing whatever brings glory to God. That has to be the rule of thumb, if you will, for decisions that are made in the church, decisions that are made in the home, in marriage, parenting, on our jobs, and all sorts of places. It's what will give God glory. That's what's important. Not what I think, not what you think, but what has he said? And what is he saying? And whenever you go to meetings that are contentious, especially in a Christian environment, maybe you should be the one to say, excuse me, may I have the floor one second? 
I mean, you get the floor. Say, let's invite the Lord in to help us to make the right decision and to govern and guide our hearts and minds. And you may be surprised how some people will look at you funny while others who really love the Lord will have some conviction and pray right along with you. And that's the whole idea of having peace in the middle of detours is that we invite the Lord in. Let's look at one more time. Let's look one more time at this powerful verse of scripture. And I want you to put in the comments, whatever speaks to you tonight. What, what did you need to hear? What are you hearing that you needed to hear from this teaching? Colossians 3.15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Now that last part really got me. <laughs> Paul, Paul is uncertain about his own outcome. The church members are uncertain about their own financial wherewithal. And they're also unsure about how to apply the principles of Christ in their life at this point as their new believers. Yet Paul says, not only let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, you're one body in him. You are called to peace. That's your calling. But he also says, be thankful. How much better off would your life be if you practiced thankfulness even when life is spinning out of control? What can you thank God for even when you have to go through detours? What can you praise God for about that bad situation at the job or that situation with your child or your grandchild? There is something in it to be thankful for. Paul says, concentrate not on everything that's wrong, but find something that is right and let the peace of Christ rule your hearts because you're members of only one body. We're part of each other. We're interconnected is what he's saying. Your calling is one of peace. And he says, be thankful. I'm telling you, that's a challenging word for us right there, for us to practice. It's a very challenging word, yet it's a powerful word that if we practice it, we will indeed see God move in our lives. Hey, I want to know what you got out of this teaching. Make sure you leave a comment for us. Hit that thumbs up button, that like button, share button. Make sure you subscribe and don't forget that down in the description box below, there is a free handout that goes along with this teaching. It'll help you to really fine tune it and use it for your benefit. Hey, I'm praying for you. Don't forget, you can have peace in the middle of your detours. Can't wait to share with you in the next episode. If you missed the previous ones, go back and check it out and you can catch up with your free workbook. And be right back here with us next week. Same time, same bat station. God bless you. We love you with the love of Jesus Christ.